Uh, hi, I'm John Broxton, and on behalf of the International Film Music Critics Association, I'd like to formally present Chris Young with the uh, 2014 IFMCA Award for Best Original Score for an Action Adventure or Thriller for Monkey King. Wow, thank you so much, John. I'm honored, my friend. This is a, a remarkable moment, how lucky I am that you all have made a point of singling out a score which might have otherwise disappeared completely from the surface of the earth because the film never played in America. It just exclusively, I believe, in China. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for listening. You guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect, perfect award at the perfect time in my life. Thank you. So Chris, um, can you tell us how you got involved with The Monkey King in the first place? I mean, it's very unusual for a, a Hollywood composer to be working on a film in China. Exactly. It was entirely through the uh, goodwill and eagerness of the uh, Chinese director, Soy, to want to have the opportunity to, to have an American guy meet in specifically to work on his movie. So they sought me out. I didn't. I didn't. I haven't been in the in in the. The, the China jungle desperately seeking right. a, a job. It was, it was just they called me out of the blue. It was remarkable. Right. Um, and uh, can you talk a little bit about how you approach the score? I mean, obviously, there's these big fantasy elements, and you know, you know, the, gods and monsters, and right. The weird thing about it is, I got to tell you. First of all, they were clear about two things. One is they wanted themes. They wanted horrible themes, old-fashioned kind of film scoring in that regard, number one. Number two, they wanted a big, big epic orchestra sounding with choir. And if they could make it somehow chap, uh, Chinese sounding, uh, the better. Now, I bought in some Asian instruments, uh, some of them Japanese, but nonetheless, distinctively Asian, especially the percussion instruments. Right. Uh, uh, shamisen, which is Japanese, pipa, which is Chinese and uh, the air who uh, that was featured in a few tracks. Anyway, these instruments were bought in. Uh, but above and beyond that, he gave me the opportunity to not think about this film in the way one would normally think about a film, right, a film of its type and if you were working in America, which is, hey, it's an action epic film, don't forget, I need music to change here, change here, acknowledge this, acknowledge that, acknowledge this, acknowledge that. No, it says, I just want music that will play the broad stroke of what this, of these, of any particular moment is about. That must have been quite liberating. It was totally liberating. I'd never done anything alive about it. And actually, with the amount of music that I had to write within the very short time that I had to write it, it couldn't have been better. It was perfect in that it allowed me not to have to obsess with the de the, those kind of details that film composers do when it comes to feeling the need to acknowledge a lot of things on that's happening on specific things happening on the screen. Quite frankly, I did I didn't understand what the half the movie was about anyway. I don't speak Chinese. So there, there were subtitles and everything. Right. But still, I didn't quite get it. I hate to admit this. Right. I didn't quite get the whole storyline. I had it explained to me, you know, by uh, by, uh, but she's Japanese, but there was a Japanese woman who knew the story, who could who help guide me through it. And uh, so that helped, so I knew, oh yeah, this person is, what is this person doing? Oh yeah, he's supposed to, oh, I got it, yeah. The J King, what, what? You right. know, okay, so I had that stuff explained to me, and then it became pretty clear cut. Right, are there, did you write specific character themes? I mean, obviously there's a, there's a, there's a main theme that recurs through the score, but then, you know, on the, on the album you have, um, each suite is named for a specific person or, or a concept. Yeah, but the titles, remember, remember the titles, I have a tendency on the CDs, of course, is, is I come up with titles that I think are fun. Right. And do they have anything to do with the, with the actual scene that it's written for? Sometimes, more often than not, it doesn't. Right. It's just, I like the title, I think it's appropriate for the kind of music it is. So on this end, aside for the CD, that these are the principal characters that are in this story, and I'm going to use their names. I don't care how. I'm going to put 
attach a name to one of the tracks, much in the same way that like Gustav Holtz would give one of the planets names to one of his movements. Right. So same thing here, okay. which is like the Chinese version of my planets or something. And so regardless, I, I, the, the music may or, not, may or may not have that person's theme included. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I would, I, I would maybe out. I like to ask the differences of working in Chinese cinema versus or Asian cinema versus Hollywood. Like in terms of, I guess the editing, the action. Like, were you? Did you have to adapt your style for their style of filmmaking versus anything you were working in Hollywood? I don't think so. I mean, I again, the I, the thing I adapted to was the idea that I didn't have to worry so much about the details of what was happening on the screen, you know, and especially during the action cues. Um, again, remember, when I worked on the movie, it was, there was no CGI, Min little areas of the movie had CGI, but most of it was blue screen with actors dangling with cords, you know, uh, with straps and they're flying around right. in, their, in their, you know, their costumes. But no, I didn't know what was. I didn't know what it was going to look like. I had no idea what. The ninety percent of that picture, I would say, I had pretty, very vague ideas about what it was going to look like. I was shocked when I saw. I was going to say, have you seen the final version? Then? Yeah, yeah. I was shocked. I mean, you know, what they did with it. It's pretty remarkable. I mean, it's remarkable, and it seems to have been pulled together at the last minute. Right. Okay. So I, you know, that's that's the thing. When you're doing action films that are so dis dependent on CGI, what is it? Like exactly what's what am I? What am I what's going to happen here? Oh, he's flying through. What a cloud! Okay, I just see this guy with cords attached, and he's spinning around like this. <laughs> and I see the wind blowing. I see the wind machine. I see the actual wind machine blowing his hair as he's spinning around. I go, what is happening here? Oh yeah, he's going through cloud. Okay, Fine. you want me to write cloud music here? Yeah, I'll write cloud music here. <laughs> Anyway. Okay. Um, I just one final question. Um, the the reception for the Monkey King amongst soundtrack fans has been massively, overwhelmingly positive. That's people, great. People are clamoring for an album. Is is that ever okay. going to happen? Okay. You know what? It's really sad. So so very very sad. Of all the scores of mine, which I wish I could. Well, not of all of them, but yes, I would have to say of all the recent ones that I'd love to have out on CD would be this one. There apparently is some legal issue with the, the, uh, with the producer of the picture and the distributor of the film. And there's some agreement they made with them before they start with this distributor who they're not using, they're doing another one. They're not using the same distributor. This is what I'm, I'm hearing. And this distributor, or is it the distributor? Somebody on the back end is not allowing this to happen. Okay, it's it's all legal. It's a you know, it's not a money issue. It's a legal issue, and I I don't know. It, I don't know what this what's going to ever happen with this. It breaks my heart. I, I would put it out myself in an instant if I was allowed to, but I, but I but you know even on a, my I don't my own. It's not a label issue. There's there's horsey interest. It's just legal. First, I never had this problem really. I think. It's a shame. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you and congratulations. Okay, again. you bet.